Hello. Hello. Happy, what is today? Thursday? It is Thursday. Thursday, believe it or not. Happy Thursday, everyone. This week's going by fast. Well, it's because Monday was a holiday. Oh, that's right. So today we are doing um, a fun project, completely different than I was going to um, do, but that's okay. Uh, so if you guys joined us yesterday, we did a surface preparation for some fun Halloween home decor. Um, and we did uh, all of the prep over here. We hopped over to our other channel and finished it. So let's show you that project all finished. It turned out absolutely great. I wish the photo would pick up the shimmer and the pumpkin and the distressing. You can see a little bit of the distressing in the orange, but not really in the black and white, which is unfortunate, but it is there, I promise Gorgeous. you. Gorgeous. Yes. So uh, today we are going to have some fun. Um, we are going to be doing another two part where we start here, surface prep, finish over on our other channel with everything. I'm really excited because I was going in one direction and then literally moments before I changed my direction. And we are making a haunted house display. Oh yeah. Hey. I love Halloween. I got creative juices flowing. So as you guys join, welcome to Ken's beautiful crazy life featuring Ken's creations. More importantly, Sean and Ken. Jasmine may or may not be watching. We have Riley uh, sleeping. We have Sierra, who has a ball. So who knows? This she could it. knock over everything this life could end. Mm -hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Um, so if you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, make sure you head over there. If you have not liked our Facebook page, like it and get notifications. Um, we are doing a ton of changes. So you'll slowly start seeing things change on our Facebook page, on our YouTube everywhere um and more importantly um as you guys uh watch our videos give us feedback we posted right now our main photo or our main video has been the scavenger hunt and then we did a live broadcast unveiling the brand new ken's beautiful crazy life depending on where you're watching you should see links so if you're on facebook and you're watching on your phone or ipad or something you might have to turn it into a vertical position and hit the down arrow, all the links should be there. If you're watching on YouTube, same thing, turn it, link should be underneath there. All of the products I'm using today um, is going to be there. So if you need that, let me know. Also, make sure to share this with your crafty or non-crafty friend family. We are painting and it's gonna get messy, I'm just letting you guys know, and we're getting things ready. So in today's project, we're gonna be using paint, we're gonna be using our Glowforge, we're gonna be utilizing some glue guns and all of that stuff. Some of the links down below are affiliate links. By using the affiliate links, you do help support our beautiful crazy life, and for that, we thank you. And as an Amazon associate, I get I don't know how something for qualifying purchases. Yes. I get incentivized for qualifying purchases. There you go. Something like that. Yes. Close enough. And I need your guys' help to tell me what my secret symbol or secret gesture should be for Alex, Monkey, and Benny. So, you know how Carol Burnett had the thing where she would tug on her ear to say hello? I want to make sure that when we go live, I'm saying hello to Benny and Alex mm -hmm. without interrupting the broadcast. So help me figure out, should I pick my nose? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> so tell me what you guys think that gesture should be. So let's just dive right in. So we're going to be distressing or painting a lot. I'm going to show you all the surfaces we're going to be doing. And then we are going to go cut something on our Glowforge. Um, so the surfaces we are going to be preparing are all going to be painted, even though they are beautiful. So we have a couple different things. We have um, these house cutouts. We have a box frame. And then we have these, I'm going to say this right, tags. 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 Okay. Sure. So we have these, and we're going to be actually using um, one, two three, four, five of these. 
Um, so we're going to be painting all of this, but first we're going to make some embellishments. So for those of you who've been asking on um, how to use a Glowforge, we're going to show you how to use this. Before I head into that room, please know I cannot hear comments and I cannot talk to you, so Sean will be broadcasting for me. We are using our Pro Glowforge. This is a class four laser, so um, this one does need to be uh, protective gear because if... There is a, a pass-through on it, and I can show you that, but if that's open, laser, boop, out your eye, oopsie. Um, and we're doing cutting. Now, the what we're cutting are ghosts that I made based off a template. Um, I'm not going to show that in today's video. I will show you in a future video how I use Adobe Illustrator and make SVGs and convert things. Um, and for those of you that use uh, popular uh, silk screens or mesh or stencils, you can technically just stencil or um, use whatever medium through those screens right on the board and the Glowforge will create an outline out of it, mm -hmm. which is super cool. It is but cool. we created an SVG. So I'm going to grab the camera here. Hold on. We're going to go over there and Sean's going to kind of tell you what I'm doing. Um, this shouldn't take too long because it is a cut. It is not a etch or engraving. So, um, so this will give you guys a little indication of how... So let's go in there. We're going to go through our messy house. So this off it goes. There's the washing bin where we do all that. All the surfaces are back there. Look at those pretty surfaces. And then um, some of those glass windows that we got for cheap, cheap. And then, of course, all the 40. And there's our other laser. And then we're going into the old craft room for those who know what it is. Um, so here is the Glowforge, Glowforge Pro. And we are using a, a piece of thick uh, draft board is what they call it. It's basically MDF. This is the thicker stuff. This is the uh, one that's quarter inch thick. We're using one that has a big space, so we will not. So this way we can save. That there that he's pointing at is, is a uh, QR code that the camera on the Glowforge can see and then can identify that's the pass-through, so once you take off the protective cover, then you can actually take long pieces of wood and pass it through that side and comes out the other end. Obviously, on this, we would have to turn our um, Glowforge the other way or set it somewhere where you could pass through long pieces. On this counter, we could not do that right away. Um, we're going to use our iPad um, to connect to app.glowforge.com, which gets us into our account. And all of the stuff we have done are is already there. Um, there are the ghosts that's already been uploaded. So he's just gonna tap on that and open it. Once he opens it, it's going to render the design and it's going to look at the uh, piece of wood that's in there, which it has already done because we kind of went in there to make sure everything worked up really well. Um, do, 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 do. And we're, it's telling us that it's ready, so all he has to do is hit ready. It tells us that it is the thick draft board, which is perfect. It's set for cut, and we're going to be ready to go here. This one still has its internal motor, so it's extremely loud and noisy. There's the cutouts already set up, ready to go. And this is where you can, if you need to do a score, you could do a score, or if you need to engrave it, you can engrave it, or totally ignore it. Um, we're going to, if you did an engrave, it turns a different color, then we know which one, what is gonna be engraved. We're not gonna engrave, we wanna to go to cut. So there is, those are cut lines. And we can adjust these anywhere we want. Uh, this is what we did, so make sure it fits in that spot. We weren't sure if it was going to, but it did. And that is how we do that. This, Jerry, this is the Pro Glow Forge. This one is the one that is approximately 5,900, but with our link, you can get 500 off. So we're going to shut that, and what it does first of that is it uh, it centers, uh, goes to a set point to make sure that it knows how much space there is between the laser head and the, the material you're cutting. And once it does that, it's going to go in the back corner in what we call the home position. Um, once it's done, we're waiting for it to say um, that it's preparing. It's going to figure out how long it's going to take to cut. And that's all we're waiting for. So this is it. It's going to take three minutes and 55 seconds. The glow light lunge. We just push the button. The fan starts up and then it'll go. And there it goes. You may even hear it. 
It's so loud. You almost need head, you almost need uh, earplugs to um, do this. There's the tube. That's the laser tube in the back. So the laser flashes through there. You can kind of see it go through. This one here is the more powerful. The plus and this one have the same power of 45 watts, and um, it is faster than the basic. We have the basic in the other room. That's the exhaust. The fan is on the other side of that. So all of the smoke and fumes go right out my uh, window right there. I wanted it as short of a space, but it could be longer if you want. I just wanted to do it in a short version of it. That there, that is a little window. The laser is actually on the, comes through a box and then goes through there. He's gonna show you the exhaust port. Hopefully our Wi-Fi doesn't go down when you go outside. There is all of the stuff we've been cutting. That's the leftovers. And then that is where the exhaust is. It's getting choppy, which means we're losing Wi-Fi. During the, when sun goes down, you can actually, the sun shoots right across the back there and you can see the smoke coming out. So you know it's working. Well, there you go, Melissa. Glowforge for yourself. See, it's already starting number two. It's almost done there. Cutting is pretty quick. Uh, engraving is very slow, especially if you do high def engraving, uh, like a picture of somebody on a piece of something, uh, that takes a long time. It can take up to hours, depending on the how detailed it is. Yeah, Jerry, gotta remember that one where we did everything from that room. We wanna, we're going to be, part of this channel is going to be watching us do um, remodeling of that room to be a laser room. Uh, what do we do with the scraps? If the scrap is big enough to have something still cut on it, we keep it off down to the by the side. If it is like the gnomes that I'm cutting out, the boo gnomes, it, there is no, there's almost no uh, wood left. So that is going to be just thrown out. We could burn it, but it's got a lot of glue in it. So I really don't want it to sort of probably be a little smoky. So I'm just going to be taking all our scraps to the dump. Real wood I'd keep. Got a minute six left. Yeah, some people, I guess some people do sell the scraps. We, uh, our scraps we use up to the point where there's nothing left. Wood wood is a lot different. This is uh, letting us know that we can choose between the pro and the other one when we want to. So since we use um, our uh, iPads, we either, they're interchangeable. We just have to ch uh, check the one that we're using. This one obviously is the pro. The actual laser um, is being beamed across into that head, hits a mirror at 45 degrees and straight down. When's our first cooking video? It's gonna be on a Tuesday, but I don't know what Tuesday we're doing that. That's up to Ken, he's the one that knows that. And it's going to be a video, a few of them are gonna be videos before we do an actual uh, live one, so. And we'll let you know when we do a live one, if it's something simple and we can do it down here in the room with like, you know, our my portable um, induction, we'll do it down here. If not, if it needs to be done upstairs, we'll, we'll, we'll just shoot our live up there. We did get a pro, yes. And now it's done, it's cooling down and the fan turns off. And once that happens, you can go ahead and just open up. And you just take that open and you pull up the piece. They fall out. That piece is now pretty much done for, so that one can go outside. And he's gonna collect his um, ghosts and come right back. We did get a pro because we we've been cutting so much and if our cutting gets even more extensive, we might even go to a very, uh, an industrial one that can do much more. And here it comes. Hey guys. All right, nice job. I'm gonna go turn off the machine. Okay. So that is how we work with some of our stuff with the Glowforge. We hope to do more of that as well. So keep an eye on when we do stuff like that. We'll actually do things that is gonna be like all Glowforge. Um, some stuff may take a while, be a little noisy. Um, my other one, my basic actually is quieter because I took the internal fan out and put in an external fountain, and we will talk about that when we do another thing about that. 
Hi guys. Hello. So these are the thick draft board. Sean wanted to do them on thick. Um, and it, it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean the thin, it depends on what you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so uh, we just use a weeder. And you can always tell which way is up and down because this is all burnt. Um, on a scale of, Sean, would you say 0 to 10, where was I when we first got the Glowforge? You were at first like, mm, maybe, maybe a 6. I was more like a 4. I bought it because a friend of mine who was a paper crafter said, you will love this. I didn't even think anything of it. Um, and Sean, every time he saw the Facebook thing, uh, their Kickstarter, he was like a typical guy and was like, that's so cool. That's so, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Um, so I bought it kind of for him. We actually bought it on our trip to Cancun. We were in a layover and when our plane was delayed in Seattle for some reason. And I was just sitting there and so I bought it. Didn't even tell him. I was like, hey, I just bought the basic... Glowforge, and he was like, you did what? Yeah, what? And I was like, is that okay? And he's like, uh, yeah. Yeah. And then we started utilizing it and fell in love with it. Now, there, um, I will tell you that their tape that they use, especially after it cuts, it can sometimes be a little on the sticky side. Which is so, fine. Which is fine. Um, and especially if you do a lot of engraving or scoring, which... Um, you can come up to us real quick, okay. because I didn't know the difference. So, in the beginning, um, I asked Sean, what's the difference between a score and an engrave? And, because there's that option, and I said, I don't understand the difference. An engrave is literally, it's engraving, back and forth, little things. A score, especially for my paper crafter people, a score is a score. It's not cutting, a score is a score, 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 score. Um... I love score chocolate bars, by the way. Anyways, uh, it's literally cutting the top of the wood, it's, but not only yeah, through. It gives cool. it a nice you can do indention. Look it down. You can uh, do uh, most of the stuff that people have been ordering that has a score line. We're just doing it in the draft mode, so it doesn't do it very deep. If you do it in the um, high def, it does it deeper. Um, takes longer. Uh, we think the draft is just fine. There's no reason for it. Uh, Heather says she has an inline Essex Infinity fan, which I think that's... A, is it the 6-inch or the 4-inch? I have the one where it's deducts down to a normal 4. I wish I had this, the bigger one. Um, I think no matter what, you'll always have a smell. I don't care how I much... I love the smell. Is. But did you tell them what our friend said just now? Hmm? So our friend Sarah D... Saturday. We gave her daughter a whole gnome set because she Ray Dunn hunts for me. I don't have time to go out in the morning, unfortunately. And so she always sends me photos and she's like, Ken, do you need this? And I'm like, uh, yeah. And so I gave her daughter, her daughter came over here and was like, what is in all of these little bags? And I was like, those are gnomes. And so we gave her a gnome set, forgot to give her a weeding tool. So luckily her nails are getting it. But she opened the box and what did she say? She says... Wow, this smells like Sean and Ken's house. So our house officially smells like a campfire. <laughs> yes. I like the smell, but it can get a little much. All right, we are doing a lot of black painting. I'm going to grab this. This is just um, uh, butcher paper, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Wouldn't you call it this, Sean? Butcher paper? This is, uh, yeah, just basically butcher paper. And we're going to do um, this completely black. Can you go to the other camera, oh, Sean? Oh, yes. Thank you. Sometimes we've got to remind them, people. Yeah, sometimes. Sean's not perfect either, so. All right, so I'm going to grab uh, this, and this is Midnight Sky. Now, a little of a disclosure on that. That's Dixabel Midnight Sky. Um, I was wondering why it was so much darker than our caviar, to which Sean reminds me, you know, Ken, you like to mix, mix paint in their jars, and you don't even remember. <laughs> kind of snotty like that. Kind of. Um... To which I was like, oh, I kind of remember that. Yeah. So Midnight Sky is more of a dark, 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 dark blue. Um, this is a dark black. Oh, sorry. Jeez. Uh, because I actually um, mixed it with a whole bunch of leftover black. So, yeah. So, yeah, and then, so yeah, Midnight Sky is is black with a hint of gray in it. It just has that grayish hint of it, and that's what um, it has. Um we're going to be utilizing um, the synthetic brushes. Now, I got mm -hmm. some people asking, 
on Dixie Bell Synthetic Brushes how they are to the something brush. There's another brush name for these. Oh, and everyone, um, I haven't used them, but I ordered one so I can compare it. Let me look it up for you guys. Okay, I'm going to answer a couple questions okay. real quick. Um, Catacrank, he just, I just know what he was doing, so that's why I was able to do that. I'm uh, the six inch. I wish I had the six inch, uh, Heather. So, uh, do you ever have to replace the laser? Don't know. Um, I hope not, because if you were to replace that laser because it went bad after the warranty went bad, I'm sure it's very expensive. Uh, sometimes you may have to replace the lens. Um, that's like 45 bucks. Um, but other than that, it's, I haven't heard anybody doing that other than that jerry parks asked how thick are those pieces they are one quarter inch anything that's considered thick is considered quarter inch the medium is one eighth inch so they are called i cannot find them but they were called um i'll i'll think of it but it is I don't, I wish I had the answer. I don't because I haven't used those yet. So, but I'll think of it. Jazzy's the one that told me about mm. it or, um, I don't remember. It doesn't matter, but I'll get it for you guys. But I don't know because I haven't used those. Now we are doing, um, this all in black and I want black is black and black because it's a midnight haunted kind of a haunted house feel. Right. Raylene says, I'm in Oregon and our house smells like smoke. I bet with all, this, oh, all the fires down there. They warned us in all of our news channels that um, they said that we need to prepare for tomorrow because yeah, the a... California and Oregon fires, all the smoke is, the wind's okay. pushing it up to up us. Here. Yeah, they said there's a huge cloud. And that we need to prepare up. ourselves and... Um, we had that happen in 2017, maybe, and it was bad. And it was here for weeks, not just like a couple days. It was here mm -hmm. a long time. Yep. Mm -mm -mm. I'm painting the frame as well. Yep. So we're going to be painting this block. We're going to be painting um, these ghost block. And then we're going to do some distressing on the houses and the tiles, the roof tiles that we're going to be making. So um, this one is just what I call your basic. We want this just basically all black. I don't even want it to look like a box frame, really. And the reason for that is my house cutouts are going to sit in front of it. Uh, Jazzy says they're called Klingon. Thank you, Jazzy. So like I have Klingons. not, <laughs> um, I have not tested those yet, no. um, but I do know a lot of people like them. And the reason I haven't tested them is um, I didn't even really know about synthetic brushes until Dixie Bill turned me on to them. So yeah. Um, Rose asks, can you only use Glowforge material because of the scanning code? You do not. You can use anything you want. Um, that, I it just that makes code, it though. it just makes it simpler and easier and you don't you just put it in and go and it already knows what to it's put the kind same. of the same thing for my cricket fans and silhouette brands on the auto detect or the smart dial what they used to have um where the machine knows all the settings even if you don't have that code sean usually will be like mm, this looks like medium draft board yeah. and use it and we do a test cut yeah there are there are some things called um was it beyond Beyond, beyond the manual? Yeah, beyond the manual. So a lot of people who've been doing this for a lot longer than we have have come up with the settings to do certain things on different or types of wood. things that it won't work on. Yeah, there's a lot of things that won't just because it's not powerful enough. But um, you can use your own stuff. Um, acrylic makes your whole house smell like yeah, a acrylic, studio. Acrylic. I love it. Somebody said something about acrylic. Acrylic is... Um, this It can come in a, in a medium size, which is the eighth inch or quarter inch. But it, it does cost more because it is acrylic, not wood. Um, actual wood wood can be expensive depending on what kind you get. Well, I think this machine is so popular now that Home Depot and Lowe's are getting on the bandwagon. Because now if you go to Home Depot and just look up Glowforge, it brings up all of the Glowforge ready materials. Yeah, I, think, I think they're calling them laser ready. And most of that stuff is a thin veneer of the actual wood. Like, Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead.
Um, I engraved silver wire. Ah, yeah, depending on what type of metal you can do it. Stainless steel, forget it, it won't. Um, but there are some metals you can actually um, do it like a, what's the word I'm thinking of? Uh, some aluminum or aluminum, depending where you're from. Um, you can do that. Like a lot of the uh, phones and iPads, they're aluminum and you can etch on that. We are going to do some food, Denise, on the Glow Forge. We're hoping to... We bought some food and I think it's gone bad. Yeah, it's gone bad. I had to so send it away. So we um, had everything prepared for a lot of Glow Forge videos and then someone, not naming names, that might rhyme with Mazzy, was like, I think people want you to cut out gnomes. And I was like, what? And that <laughs> is a tale for another yeah. day. Uh, Casey asks, what kind of paint are we using? Again, this is Dixie Bell. Their chalk mineral paint. This one is the... Midnight is Sky. Midnight Sky. That I probably put, mixed a little bit of my... I, I think I put the rest... No, there's my full color. I don't know what other black I put in here. You put black in there. I put... I, I wanted a really deep, dark black for... Um, it was a Halloween project. Yeah. And caviar is their blackest, but it's not, in my opinion, like a deep black like this is and i like a deep like for halloween yeah. i want pitch dark black um you can open the lid and show the lids compared to each other and you'll see that what i'm saying um it's not bad i mean i obviously love it because i use the big old jar of it but you may or may depending on how good your monitor is this is deeper black i think just because all the stuff he's added to it um does Dixie Bell paint need to be sealed wax to keep it from chipping? I don't I think, think so. so. It, I it, mean, it we, absorbs well. It really does. Uh, we will, if we're like auctioning off something or painting something for someone, it's naturally going to seal because of our spray we use. Um, but I haven't seen any problem with it. And it dries really quick. That's the number one thing I like about chalk paint. Uh, which reminds me, I need to make it to Joanne's and get that one decor because I don't know what that stuff is. And some people were asking about it. It's by Folk Art. Yeah. Folk Art actually has this really cool uh, makeup now for people that make uh, cosplay. Oh. oh, it's cosplay's big, Sean. Yes, it is. Denise asks, could you laser cut out a Pez stem? The stems are plastic. Um, you probably could. Good, yeah. I mean, it's it's a 3D piece, so you'd have to cut eat all four sides and glue them all together. But I'm sure you could if you can find the plastic. I'm going to do a quick dry on this, and then we're going to move this out of the way and move on to our next one. But Sean's going to mute here real quick. Mm -hmm. Let me know when I need to talk. Yep. So we're going to let these dry. A couple, a little um, fun fact for you that I learned the hard way when painting. Um, I prefer to roll the paint because it does give it a nice smooth finish. Uh, but on this one, I kind of want a brush stroke. But if you were going to paint and use a hair dryer on the MDF, even the thick, when your paint starts to dry, it gets lighter and it'll start to shake on you. And sometimes it can flip over. So Watch out. 
keep that in mind. Debbie asked to use the Silhouette program for any of your stuff. No. Um, no, you could use their SVG files. Um, I go but, to their online store a lot and yeah. download their SVG yeah, files. Yeah, so you yes. go to their store, go to that and do it. But we, he usually does a lot of stuff through um, either Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Illustrator to, to create, or you can go to Etsy and find people who make stuff. Yep. Okay, so these guys can go over on our drying rack, which we got at El Clasico. We need to buy probably another one soon. Wow, Nancy says she checked online on Amazon about a cling brush and it was 41 bucks. They're expensive, and that's another reason why I didn't... Um, I don't know how, why that would have gotten stuck with that, but mm. um, another reason why I haven't invested is they're expensive, but supposedly they're, they're where it's at. Yeah. Uh, Robin asks, why are you painting the ghosts black? It's part of your... It will be part of our second video. Second video. So we will be, once we're done painting, we'll be jumping over there and you'll see why. Now, typically... Um, just because this one says this one did say it is midnight sky, this one actually is lighter in color than caviar. So if you look at midnight sky, it has got a gray uh, a gray tint to the black. So it's not black black. So their caviar is their blackest, but he's added blacks from other chalk paints, and it just happened to be a little darker than the rest. Okay, so we're gonna grab our three houses and our tags and we're going to need i'm trying to remember one two three four five so one two three four okay oh that hurt my brain okay so what i'm going to do go ahead sean i was going to answer the jamie's question this has um just distilled water that's all it is just distilled so these here, I I only want half of this, um, and you'll see when we put it together, but we're going to take three of these. These are Fiskars, and they're called the Power Cut. It's part of their whole um, home improvement line, or F DIY line, sorry. And uh, we got them two creativations ago. We um, won a gift pack from them. And uh, I have to say, I've been pretty impressed with these. Mm -hmm. They are pretty strong things. You'll yeah. see here in a sec. So I just, uh, I'm not trying to be perfect on this, but I just want to kind of score it where I want to cut it. So just a little faint line so I can at least, and then literally I just take these. Some heavy duty scissors from Fiskars. What's the thickest wood you can cut on the Glowforge? Um, I don't know for sure, but I've heard half inch to maybe three quarter inch, but with if you're trying to cut all the way through, you're gonna have to probably do multiple passes. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm not sure, because it's only 40, the Pro and the Plus are 45 watts, the Basic is 40 watts. When you get up to the higher wattage, like industrial, they're 100, 130 watts. Maybe even more on some. They can cut. That's Sean's lot. dream. Yeah, they can cut a, cut a lot thicker. He wants he wants a laser cutting machine so big it won't fit into a craft room. It would. Is that like a you feel manly like Tim Allen in? Uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, is that why you want it? No, I think it'd be it'll help speed up a lot of stuff that we're doing. When you cut the ghosts, they were burned. What do you do for that? The machine um, does that. The machine actually does the burning because it's it's a laser. It's burning it right through it. Um, if you get if you because there is tape on there, it keeps the surface itself from being burned. If you take it off, it will show burn scores. Um, of course, the edge, the outer edge, is burned. It's black. So you could, if you don't want that. You could use some sandpaper to get back down to the original wood or the stuff being MDF. You could do that, but most people don't care about that part. Nah, it's not gonna work. Can you hold it then? I just need to get off these pieces so they don't get stuck in my paint. Yeah. All right, 
Thank you, Jonathan. You can just put it over there mm -hmm. if I'm not gonna. Let's paint. Oh, Heather has a question about Adobe. Adobe. I have an Adobe account, but just don't understand it compared to Inkscape or Silhouette. Any good tutorials you recommend? So, um, Inkscape is very glitchy on a Mac. So I don't, if you're using a Mac, I don't like Inkscape. Um, Adobe is, in my opinion, amazing because they help you, they walk you through. And literally I just go to YouTube and look up like, I'll just say um, Adobe Illustrator creating an offset or whatever. Um, it took me a little bit of time to get used to it like anything else, but it's a pretty easy program. Mm -hmm. And if you know Photoshop, it's even easier, but um, I am not a fan of Inkscape. Inkscape is free. Adobe, you can, um, you could do, um, I think it's a monthly for all their programs. And then if you threaten to leave them, they'll give you a discount, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Mr. Crank asks, do we ever use this stuff? What behind stuff? Us? Any stuff that's behind us? We do. I don't it's even mostly, know it's mostly just for show. Oh, is it, do we actually display that stuff? Yeah. Is that what we're asking? I think so. Oh. Tina, you can wait on the next video. Okay, so we are using Dixie Bell, but we will be using Chalked Up Paint. Now, Chalked Up Paint, um, I gave you the, I don't know if I gave you the link on this. Sorry if I didn't. Um, if you look up Chalked Up Paint, it's actually on Auntie Tay's website. This is galvanized. The reason I like this paint, it's a little bit on the thinner side. And I know what you're saying, well, why would you want that? It's really good for highlighting. So, which is what we're going to be doing here in a sec. But we're going to start with our houses. I'm going to put down a base layer of caviar and then um, work up. Uh, Jamie asks, I, I, well, I've never seen these scissors before. These are Fiskars um, power cuts. Here, I'll get um, you they're, this. They're pretty nice. This is Sean. I got you. Yeah. Here you go. You can just... Give the, while I paint, you can just give them a little chew. So as you can see, uh, these cut through, uh, these things will cut through thick leather and stuff like that. It's very, very nice and sharp. Um, they also have a nice hammer. I think it's a 12 ounce, yeah, 12 ounce hammer in their program. Then we got to use this. Which is actually pretty impressive. This is a saw, hand saw. It works very nice. It's uh, got a, it's got the dual, what they call a, a forward and backward teeth. So no matter if you're going up or down, it's always cutting. And if, as long as you keep it at straight, straight level, mm -hmm. um, I have to say I was pretty impressed with yeah. it. You have a nice little hand drill, actually very nice. As long as you have a nice sharp bit, it goes right through the wood. Another pair of scissors that they have, um, we've cut a lot through these. Um, they're snips. They're snips, but... Um, do not use that for like what I just do for the wire. tags you want to use. Yeah, you'd want to use what we use. Um, but they're very nice. As you were saying, how do they compare to Tim Holtz's? Uh, Tim Holtz probably would not cut. Oh, some his, of the uh, serrated, his scissors? His serrated his scissors. His serrated scissors, I only use on like paper crafting and stuff. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't use it for heavy duty stuff. Yeah. They come with a nice uh, level. They also have one of my favorite tools of theirs is the nail positioner. I don't yeah. know if you see it, but right here. I love that thing. So this thing, you can put different size nails in here from little teeny tiny so you don't hurt yourself. Once you put the nail inside the hole to hold it, you can put it right to your wood and start hammering. And once it gets going, then you just pull away. This is very nice so you don't hammer your fingers, which I've done multiple times. That is not fun, Sean. All right. So I'm going to check on mine because this is the only time we're going to be using black. Well, we might highlight it. So I'm just going through making sure all of my... And they have, a nice, no six, and they have a nice 16 foot uh, thing.
I would just like everyone to know that I told Sean, how to crank is a girl. I just mm -hmm. had a feeling. I felt it in my bones. And Sean's like, it's a boy. I was like, just because she's using a boy for her image, maybe it's because she has a crush on him because Link is a cutie patootie. Cutie patootie, man. All right. So the way I like to kind of give this a distressed type of look is we're going to work backwards. So what I mean by that is I put down my black, then I'm going to add a lot of different layers doing a dry brush method. And then um, we will finish highlighting with black again because we really do want them to be dark. <clears throat> dark-ish. We don't want it to be matching the same color as our uh, other frame. So anytime I'm highlighting, I am not going to use the synthetic. I'm going to use either brushes you get it at Home Depot. I use the French tip from Dixie Bell. They also have their uh, brush called the Bell. Uh, other brush, I mean, I use these. Sean's not a fan of them. I, I mean, they're cheap. The chip brushes. The chip yeah. brushes. He yeah. just doesn't like them because they shed. I shed which I get. They said, yeah. Yep. So I'm going to start with the uh, darkest gray that I'm using, which is called Mason Dixon. Mason gray. Dixon gray. There you go. Um, Christine says, why are you wetting everything before you paint it? Ooh, that's a good question. Do you want to answer that? Um, it helps... The, the paint itself is pretty thick, um, so it kind of thins it out as you're putting it on there, so it just kind of gli glides on better and spreads better mm -hmm. when it's lightly wet, which is why they have you wet the brush a little bit. Yeah, I um, like uh, a little bit of a thinner consistency. So this chalked up paint that I'm going to be using here in a second has a way uh, thinner consistency, and I love it. At first... If you're not used to it, you're going to be like, oh, it's really thin. But you kind of want a thinner paint to get the different layers because you want a paint. And that's the reason I'm, I'm doing this is I just want a highlighting of this, but I don't want it to overpower. I want that other color to come through. So if your paint's too thick, you can do one of two things. You can add water into the actual jar, which I don't recommend. You can keep a separate jar and add water or you can finely mist it. And I would use a fine mist sprayer. Um, you can get them at many different places. Even Dixie Bell has a fine mist sprayer. Um, we use, of course, our Chalk Couture one uh, because you don't want to. You don't want it really wet, but mm -hmm. it also gets rid of harsh lines. Yep. Uh, Jamie, yeah, again, the, uh, all those tools I showed you are from Fiskars. So if Fiskars is in Australia, you should be able to see those. Um, they should be in Spotlight, I thought. Yeah. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure when they came out, they said they were going to be in Spotlight. Because I asked that question. So we have a lot of Australian fans. Um, and I asked the lovely booth that when I saw it. All right. So we're done with that one. And we really don't need to dry this too much, but you can. But we're good. All right. So the next color I am going to use is this. This is the Chalked Up Galvanalat. Gav... Oh boy. I'm having a rough day, Sean. Which one? Galvanized? Thank you. And you can see this is a lot thinner than other paint, um, which I really like. This will give us a great way to highlight, but still show the color coming through the bottom. And I won't have to water it down as much. I mean, you could, but I'm not going to. Scissors, paper, Paul says, look at you know in your stores. Yes to Spotlight. Yep, there you go. So Spotlight um, usually is the main brand that will carry that. And I know for a fact Fiskars, the DIY tools were there when they came out. Now, if they're still there, I don't know. Like our Joanne stores, I don't think carries them anymore. It was like a hot item a year ago now, but... I don't know if they still have them there. I know Amazon does, and then Fiskars.com does. Um, so I would just check mm -hmm. those places. Jessica Siever says, uh, I bought a pair of scissors that can cut on a 45-degree angle. Boy, Ooh, that's, that's cool. Kind of cool. All right, so there we go. We have some nice distressing here. We're going to put the lid on that one because we are done with that one. And I'm going to next dip into um, this color, which is Dixie Bell Driftwood. Driftwood. And for this one, I will use... I love Driftwood. It's so pretty. Driftwood itself it or the actual, color? The actual Driftwood. 
like when we went to Oregon, all the stuff on the coast, all that. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Pretty stuff. Tina asks, is the Fisker's tool still available? They should be. On Amazon, they are. Yeah. So you kind of want it to get a little bit of a harsher line and then thinner lines, but we're just going to add, and it doesn't, when you're doing a kind of this dry, dry brush technique, you don't go through a lot of paint. Um, the one thing I'll say is always use different paint brushes because this obviously will mix with stuff over here if I still have it wet or the paint that you just used it on. Um, so just keep that in mind. Somebody questioned, what is dry brush? Meaning that the brush is more on the drier side. It is than dry. Being, I start it with it dry. Yeah, you're not dunking your thing, your brush and getting as absorbing. much. So basically, I'm getting a. I'll dip it, but get the majority of the paint on, so it's just barely on there, and it gives you this really nice look. Okay, so this one I do want to go around the edges with it real quick. We'll make this quick. And so what I do is, once again, get the majority of the paint on there, or off uh, my brush, and we're just going to go up and down with it. If you have too much paint on your brush, and you are wearing a nice shirt, say goodbye to it. Mm -hmm. Sean and I have learned that the hard way. Yes, we have. So, all right. So when I brush this way, I always go inward, and that way you get a nice... And this is going to get covered by black anyways, so this is just more of a highlighting. Uh, but there we go. the main thing I want is the sides, because you will see this from the project I'm going to be doing. Um, so I just am, you can see I'm not even really putting more paint into here. That's what dry brush kind of is. Ooh. Brenda says that she did find the Fisker's Power Cut Scissors on Joanne's website. There you go. Oh, I almost thought that was my water. <laughs> All right, we are done with that color, and we are going back to black. So, whatever my base color is, which in this case was the caviar, I'm always going to finish the entire project with that. We're just not going to use a ton of it. And the reason why <laughs> is um, it gives it a really cool distress. So, once again, I'm going to... This one's a wet brush, so I'm not going to use it. I want, I really do want a dry brush. Artistically creative. We don't do our holiday break shaking until what? A few weeks before Christmas. So not for a while. I'm actually going to go um, clean, dry this one really quick, Sean, because this is the brush I wanted to use, but it's wet, so I'm going to. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, that's too big. Okay. Well, wait. There we go. Dry enough. Nice. Okay. I'm going to dip it and get the majority of it off. Dip it and forget it. No, wait. That's another, that's another show. <laughs> and then if you are... Um, heavy handed, you want to go over this really lightly. Just like that. This is the drill we were just talking about, for those who were wondering. I feel like you're making something in the kitchen with that. Like the... Like a, a hand beater mixer hand, thingy? Hand mixer. Yep. And so this is where I ruin clothes, because this, you do not want a ton of paint on your brush and to see the difference here you can see them right next to each other where this has this really nice dark black texture but if you had too much paint and you do it too heavy you're not going to get that look and the other colors aren't going to peek through and if you have too much paint you're also going to get the splatter all over your nice beautiful pineapple shirt i.e sean might get stuff on his mm. shirt all right hope not one of my favorite shirts. Well, 
This is why I have apron for you, but you never want to wear it. Okay, so, and you can, I, I will tell you the more levels you do, the more it will build up and have a cool look, but that's where we're gonna leave it. So we can put this off to the side to start drying and we'll grab our next house. Holly asks, what, no Halloween goodies? No, uh, we don't do Halloween goodies. I mean, my Halloween goodie I can't have right now. Um, I do make three different goodies that I like at Halloween. Popcorn balls with Jello, popcorn with Kool-Aid, and um, it's not really a goodie, but uh, on Halloween itself, my mom's tradition was to have chili and hot dogs. Chile. And so that's what we'll do on Halloween while we um, give out candy to yeah. our little kiddos. Robin asks, does the hand drill come with some bits it does it does i think it was three or four they're in different there sizes. right there there's one in there and so there's a couple more so yeah a couple different sizes any drill bit should fit into it though that's the nice thing any usually anything that's a drill well any all drill bits should fit all of them How do you prepare for smoke? I do not know. Close all your windows. I think it's mostly for um, people with allergies yeah. and asthma and stuff. Um, you may also want to make sure you have a very clean filter. Uh, filter. If you do not have one that is uh, that removes smoke, go get one. They're a little more expensive, but go get one and put it in your uh, furnace. Yeah. It hurts my eyes pretty much. Other than that, it's okay, but our next door neighbor... I forget what he is officially. Like he's not a firefighter, is he? Our neighbor? No, yeah. He what does he, he does do? work for the state. I want to say what? he works for the something to do with the water. But it's water always during something. fire season. And he, he, yes. he has to go out. Yeah, he has to go out and fight fires. Like he was. I think he's down in Oregon right now. Okay, so the last thing we're gonna do is our ceiling tiles, or our roof tiles, I should say. And essentially, we want they don't have to be perfect, but they're gonna be. We kind of want them in the pair that we cut them in, um, which I don't know. So mm -hmm. this one looks like it goes to that one. It doesn't, I mean, it's not a make it or break it, but. No. Oh, wait. Freeze dry Skittles on Etsy? Yeah. Yeah, Etsy. And a lot of cities are starting to get them in their some of their stores. Look around. Do you have the Fisker staple gun? No, no. We, we have, have our Ryobi. We have Ryobi. Ryobi. Ryobi, people. Okay, so this one we are going to paint the darkest gray I have, which is actually this one, and it's called Hurricane Gray as our base layer. Uh-oh. Sean's not going to be happy with that. Oh. He's very specific on his... That's okay. But it's chalk paint. Will it not wash out? What were we talking about? Getting it splattered on you. No, it will not. We know this. Yeah. I think if you were to treat it immediately, which I can't just take off a shirt and run upstairs, it probably would. But You, you know, could. Show could. everyone your bulging muscles. Oh, dear gosh. Sexation. Sexation. You still haven't been able to do the Amon Roca, huh? It, it's, I guess it's, if you're very, if, I mean, if you live in a very humid area, you might I have will some tell problems. You, my mom will tell you, and Sean will disagree with her every time. Well, not anymore, because she's dead. But, even now, when I'm like, when are we going to make our almond roca? And he's like, it doesn't matter. And I was like, look at the weather. He doesn't think it has anything to do with it. It absolutely does. If it is going to rain, or it has a lot of moisture in the air, <clears> your <throat> almond roca will not turn out. I can guarantee you. It's come out so far every time. It has not. Yeah, it has. The yep. only time it went bad is when we used this weird book. But I, Sean now has a feel for it. We've never used a candy thermometer. The biggest thing on it, I'm telling you, is brown paper sack and real butter. And um, I hate to say, like, it's just once you get it down, you, you have it down. I mm -hmm. mean, I can do it, but Sean has it down to an art. 
and you need to make sure you measure it very, 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 like it's, it needs to be precise. As Sean says, cooking is cooking, but baking is a science. Cube confused tacos says Ooh. popcorn. I know popcorn ball Jello. Oh my gosh, it's it's crack. It's crack, which means you can use any flavor of Jello to flavor your popcorn ball. It's actually my aunt. I went over my aunt Edie, who Edie. sometimes watches us. Um, she's the one that got me addicted to popcorn balls and Golden Girls, and so um, I started. She made popcorn balls, and it's really easy. I think it's popcorn. Pop, air popped, not air popped. Yeah. popcorn, popcorn, because you don't want the butter flavor. Um, Caro syrup, sugar, and jello. Yep. So basically any flavor. And it has to be, you cannot try to trick the, the one, system and do... Is that bake it? No, that's Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid, you bake Kool it. The uh, jello popcorn, you just form into balls or in a mush. And it's, I think, mm -hmm. better than the Kool-Aid. Sean likes the Kool-Aid one better. Um, because I love watermelon. But you cannot <laughs> trick... The popcorn bowls, so some people will try to say, ooh, I'm on a diet, and try to use sugar-free Jello. It will not work. It does work. Yep. Does not work, peeps. Kristen, I'm right there with you. OMG, chili and hot dog sounds so good. I know, don't they? I know, especially on like a fall night. and oh. Put some uh, chopped onions and stuff on it. All mm. right, I'm going to dry this real quick. I've heard some people are canceling Halloween. Yeah, probably. Yeah, that's sad. That's sad. Debbie says you've got to have a caramel apple though. I'm not. Hey, a, I'm not a huge fan. We have a, a local place here in town um, called Mountain something. Uh, Rocky Mountain. Well, did I just use this? Oh no. Um, Rocky Utah, Mountain. Utah has them. Oh, do they? Yeah, I saw one. And they there. have yeah, Rocky amazing, Mountain chocolate. Amazing. My favorite is uh, the Oreo. Uh, that's yours. Mine is uh, either peanut butter finger or Heath bar. Oh, so we um, do sometimes get them at Christmas time. Yeah, vegetable beef soup mm. and homemade rolls. Can't go wrong with that, Ollie. So I'm just gonna go through and texture all of this, and I'm gonna be pretty quick about it because we're gonna do a final feature on this, and then we're gonna chop over to our other channel. Um. So if you want to see what we're going to finish with this, or if you want to see like the Ryobi glue gun in action, um, that is the channel to be on. Air quality in Northern California is unhealthy for three weeks. We had that problem a few years ago. It was it 2017. Was it just would never stop. It, just... it looked like an orange haze. It looked like we were in some dystopian future. Uh, Jennifer, no, on Etsy, just look up, go to Etsy, and then just look just up, up freeze-dried freeze and just figure out who's got the best price, right, yep. basically. Okay, Sean, do you want to dry those real quick? I'll be mm -hmm. right back. Okay, a little mute here. I can find my mouse. Oop. All right, I had one that got flipped me aside. It landed in the black, so it's just a little black. 
What? Uh, one flipped and your black is still wet, so there's a little bit of okay. black on it. That is a-okay, Mr. Shawnee. All right. Thank goodness. Thank goodness. Okay. So are they dry, though? Yeah, I think so. Okay. So now, don't you worry, Shauncey. We're using black anyways. Kristen made our almond roca, and it was amazing. It is, isn't it? It's really good. So good. So good. Okay, so I am just going to take all of these, kind of put them in a row, and I have this stencil. So we're just gonna, looks like I can get three at a time. Um, and I just take a baby wipe, dip it in my black, hold it down, and I don't want this to be perfect. I want it to have a distressed look to it. So you can paint it, you can do whatever you make your little heart happy. But I'm looking for kind of, and there is, um, if you're having a problem with it holding it down, you can tape it or you can use pixie spray. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna tape this, excuse me, Shawnee. I need to find a recipe called mound balls. Are they like stuff. mounds? I don't know. Because Almond Joys have nuts. Mounds don't. Is it nuts or? Almond Joys, Joys have nuts. nuts. Mounds, don't. mounds don't. I don't like neither, so don't eat them. All right, so instead of using baby wipe because it's not giving the texture I want, I'm going to use this, whatever this brush is that we, Sean bought me. It's a, is it a two inch or is it a? It's a one, that's a one inch. It's a one inch. You need a new one though. I need a new one. He Rocky says. Mountain Chocolate Factory. Yes, so Katie, good. that is the name of that place that makes the different kinds of popcorn balls. And I changed my mind again. So now we're just painting. Kathy says I pulled the popcorn, jello popcorn recipe on last year and made it a couple times. It's to die for. The jello or the Kool-Aid? I like the Kool-Aid because. I like the jello. The Kool-Aid ones you can find. Um, more flavors. More flavors like watermelon. You used to like it until we, they, um, okay. So I hope you guys can see that in there. Even though it's pretty black, you see the texture it gave it? Kind of yeah. cool, right? So we're gonna dry it, but then you guys are gonna think I'm crazy. We're gonna wipe it off. So just a sec. See what it did? Removed it or pushed it? Did it squish it? You kind of squish it, I guess. I don't know the best terminology, but. It gives it this cool looking distress. So this one is all done. Moving on to this one, we're gonna dry it and do the same thing. So right when it's about ready to dry. $15 for a four ounce bag of Skittles. That's actually a good, nice size. Especially yeah. if you've never had them. I will say, I don't know why I can't eat, they're more intense, yeah. the flavor, so you can't eat as many. I guess that's not true. You, If you're a sugar addict, you can probably get through it. Okay, so just dabbing it off. Isn't that cool? Sean, that's when you say, yes, it looks yes, great. Very cool. Sorry, I was reading Holly's big, long piece here. She says, uh, this is a really nice thing to watch. I bought the Apple Pencil and Procreate. And Procreate. Ooh, Procreate's a good have been program. been on training videos, binge trying to keep up with teachers. This is no pressure. Thanks, guys. I like Procreate. I just don't use it enough to understand it. I do believe that's what Omar uses to make all of his cute avatars. Oh, yeah. Um, Trudy, I do toasted. I make my, I make my own toasted coconut when I do... Um, Toast the coconut. Yeah. For what? When I do the uh, uh, chicken curry. Mm, his chicken curry. That's going to be alive on this channel soon. That'll that be will alive. be one of the few ones we don't do as a recorded one just nope. because uh, there's a lot of pieces to it and um, we love live. Let's just be honest.
And we'll just might as well get this one going. Now, once we are done with this, um, you will probably need only about 10 minutes to get ready with our next channel, would you say? Yeah, just clean up real quick around yep. here and then and go. Then, um, so if you don't want to watch that, you can always just check back and see later. We'll always show what we did. Or you can join us. Um, you can look up that channel. Just look up Ken's Creations. And both of my channels will come up. So if it's not this channel... It's the other one. Yay! Christine says, all this taco sweets I had to eat. Me an icing covered croissant. Mmm, croissants. I love a good really? croissant. I love a good croissant. I love a good croissant. Holly, that was just the normal paint. That's how thick that uh, paint is from uh, Dixie Bell. It's thick. That's why we kind of use that a little extra water to it. Thin it out some. You won't need to do the other side because I don't think it's something you'll actually see, Kristen. That's why only one side is being done. Man, I love this scrubby. Look at that. Now hold on, let me get over there. Look at how clean that got it. Hold on. Oh. There, now look, yeah, look. You just cleaned that completely. All gone. The scrubby did that, which is that thing right there. It's got a little scrubby in the soap itself. As the soap dip dissipates, you're left with just a plain old scrub. Scrubby, scrubby. Mm-hmm. Okay, so once again, we're going to just... Keep on going, I'm gonna dry it. Katie says it was miserable over the weekend where she lives, 114 to 116. Yeah, it's a bit hot. A bit hot, that's, that's really hot. That's a bit hot. Just make sure if you're doing this technique, you do not drag. If you drag, it gets rid of that kind of impression it leaves. <laughs> Two got stuck. No, that one is just goes back. Oh. It's done. Dry chicken Diablo, honey, yellow mustard, and curry powder. Ooh, that sounds good too. That sounds good. Now, chicken adobo, a which is a Filipino dish, which is one of my faves, is very good. I don't think I've ever had that. You have not, because it's chicken on a bone. Ugh. Hate chicken on a bone. Yeah. It got up to about 84 here today, and it's supposed to be in the 90s this weekend. And it was really cold Monday. Oh my goodness, it was like 65. It was chilly, wind. chilly Monday. When it was so windy. Oh yeah. I don't even know how I'm gonna edit your videos when I'm hungry. Cause that's what I'm starting to edit is the food stuff. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Mm, so good. Marie Dunn. Me too, Ken. No chicken on a bone. Yeah, it's gross. I love it. I could eat. eat I could eat. I would cook more chicken if I could do that. If he'd you eat would it also cook of, more fish if you could. I would cook more fish if I could. And I did cook fish on Monday because I was over at your brother's house. And I... I cooked it on the smoker. The smoker. And it turned out really nice. Yeah, you were. It was a, it was a piece of salmon. That big, and I ate it all. Yeah, I did. Now, if you want to, if you want to smear it to give it even more distress, you can. I'll show you. So, you want to make sure it's really dry, or as dry as possible. I already kind of did it on this one, so I'll do it. And you can just, in random spots, I know there's a lot going on down here, in random spots, just press, and it will streak it. And it just gives it kind of like it's, you know, a uh, beat up tile, so. It saved it, it didn't fall over. 
Where is it? It's in between the Ooh, racks. nice save. So we're going to do that on a few tiles just to make it look even more worn. Just on a few, not all of them. Katie, I would have thought you were in um, Arizona by with those temperatures, but Southern California. Crazy. All right. So I'm going to put all of these over on my drawing area. Oh, sea bass. I haven't had sea bass yeah. in like forever. It's, it's their fish. The fish oil is like butter. Gross. I did have halibut cheeks once and it wasn't bad. Ooh. Yuma was 126. Oh my God. Now that's hot. Okay. So let's put that over there. That is a scale. That is a fish scale. Uh, Thing, wasn't it gross on the your oh, uh, thing on that yeah yeah probably yeah. i don't know the packages or, or somewhere what's the other word the mermaid tail mermaid or... tail yeah okay so let me go ahead and get all of this off here gotta love butcher paper wrap up you're done gone, gone, gone. almost like a bubble wrap yeah kind of like that so i'm gonna wash my hands real quick Stuff works really well. I love smoked salmon. Like, you know, smoke, smoke, where it's smoked all the way. This was just cooked on a smoker until it was done. And it just had that nice little smoky flavor as you were eating it. Or as I was eating it, because it was so good. Okay guys, so let me just show you kind of what we got going on here. We have our box frame nice and dry. And all of our other pieces. So give us about 10 to 15 minutes mm -hmm. and we will go live um, uh, fairly soon, I guess. Yes. Pretty quick turnaround time. So we will see you over there. Bye Cheers. guys. Bye.